Hi everyone. So there is a lot of chatter around workload unit. How can you save them? What exactly the workload unit is? How you manage them? So we will go into that detail. What is the workload unit? How can you save your workload unit? How bubble calculate the workload unit and everything in detail in this video. So let's start. So first we understand what is the workload unit in a technical term. Think workload unit as a unit to measure the work that bubble server has to put or perform to power your app. Simple. Okay. So if you measure any weight, you either measure weight in pound, kgs, all these are the unit of weight so that you get intuition. Okay. How heavy is this? How heavy is that? So the same way bubble has come up with this unit thing, workload unit to measure, okay, which app basically causing more or less stress on the bubble server thing because that it directly connect with their pricing. I know bubble should use better name rather than workload unit. I don't know. You suggest some in the comment section. What should be the good name for that? But it is what it is. And before moving further, all these workload unit na, is connected to the bubble server, not on the client side. Whatever you do, the client side is free. It's completely free. Bubble charges only for whatever their server is consumed. So this is workload unit. Next we understand how that workload unit is calculation happen. If you just see this picture here, bubble has clearly uh, mentioned each action, how much workload unit will be consumed. But it is not that directly pretty simple. It is not that simple to calculate. Let me just give you one real example. And then we will walk you through more. So let's suppose you just book a ticket for your luxury hotel. You book for two, two days to three night, 5,000 rupees per day. Do you think this is the actual cost? Right? No, because you will take some vehicle to go to the hotel. Either you will take a train, bus, flight, whatever it is. So that will cost you something. Then when you reach to the hotel, someone come to took your uh, luggage and that they will put that luggage into your room. So you will give them some tip. Then you will feel hungry and then you will say, okay, let's eat it inside the uh, room. Then you will call the reception and then they will charge you for that food. Then you say, okay, let's watch some TV inside the room. Then you need to buy a one day or two day plan depend upon your need to watch the TV or you need some extra bottle of water. Then you need to pay for them. So if you eventually see just to avail the stay in that luxury hotel, you have to pay all this extra. Do you say in already included in your hotel bill? bill? No, you have to pay extra kind of same. It works with the bubble also. So let me just take a one real example. So let's suppose you want to run one action, modify the database thing. So modify the database thing have a cost of 0.5 workload unit. But in order to modify something, you need to have it. You need to locate it. So we will use either do search for or something like that. So to first locate the thing that you want to modify it. So in order to do that, you have to use do search for action that will cost some workload unit. Then you will find the data that you want to update. So for example, you want to update any user table email column with something else. So you need to find that value. How you find that either you will make a database query or you may API query or something like that. So that will also cost some workload unit because you are consuming bubble server. So in summary, so in order to perform, modify the database thing, you have to spend first Engine. workload unit for running X and modify a database thing. Second workload unit for running do search for action to locate the data. Third, either you will call API or database query to update what data you need to update. So you'll see in order to just run single action, you, you end up paying for the three things. That's how workload unit calculation works. Now we will go step by step over the different area of the bubble where how like how bubble calculate and what is the parameter that affect the workload calculation. The first major thing is do like searches. What whenever you call any action like do search for make changes into the things. The first is searches. So whenever you make an API call of do search for. So this searching divide into two parts. One part is searching that data. Second is sending that search data at a client side. That searching thing again divide into the two part. The first part is how heavy your data how big your database and second is how you actually calling that do search for search constraint. 
the first thing is the volume of the database and second is complexity of the dynamic search dynamic search basically means the search constraint you just put on the do search for the better your search constraint you will less cost the workload unit so in general bubble follow the process of elimination while doing the search what is meant it basically first remove what don't need to be searched so for example there is a one lakh record and you have set up your uh, database constraint in such a way 80,000 are not related to that thing so your first 80,000 of the rows will removed it bubble will search only from this 20,000 remaining 20,000 so the better your constraint is that process of elimination works pretty well and that will end up saving a lot of workload unit this is a part related to how bubble searches the second part how like sending that search data to the client side that basically involve the privacy rules so if you don't know what is privacy rule is in just a summary i will tell you it basically demonstrate what data need to be leave from the bubble server to the client side or whenever you make api call less data you send to the client side less workload unit we it will consume so i think you got it uh, just to give you summary the big database it it is more it cost you the workload unit the well you retain your privacy rules it will cost you less the well you write your database constraint more detailed that will better help you to save the workload unit whenever you use a advanced filter that basically force bubble to go line by line go each record so that that cost will be a lot of workload units so try to avoid the advanced filter and bubble user catching method on a page if you added a do search for with some constraint multiple times on a page let's suppose you have done it for the four times and you are using a same constraint each every time so bubble will not call the bubble server four times it will call only one time and use that data as a cache in every four call so it's better not to not to make it four times just reference it from there for the first time and if you are using a repeating group and using a pagination bubble will never fetch all the data all the search data in a once it will just fetch the 10 20 item depend upon your pagination setting that will also save you a lot of workload unit okay one more thing if you have set up some do search for and you are updating your data so that will trigger a real time update of your search query search result that will also cost you some workload unit so mind about it so the next thing is page load page load basically means whenever someone go to your page and visit your page basically or refresh the page so the page load basically consists of first thing is fetching all the required javascript code at the client side second thing is involved with fetching all the data that is required whatever you have called with the do search for repeating or anything third it will call anything that under of the pages load event so there is a page is load event in the workflow whatever you put under that that will call as soon as your page is loaded so that is also goes into that and also whenever you use go to action go to page action so whenever user go to page action it always call your page is loaded whatever you have written under the page is loaded action so keep remember about it so if you want to save in your workload unit in your page load keep remind whatever you are loading on a page is loaded event if it is not necessary don't do it otherwise it will cost you second is don't load or visible every item or that is not required on the page this is the second thing third is use light weighted groups or the data is not required don't fetch it in a one go fetch the data whenever it is required so these are the three tips you can use to save your workload unit in the page load next thing is workload and action all the action that run at a client side will not consume anything any workload unit whatever the action that is related to server side that will cost you the workload unit that is a one important thing and also all the action optimize the action that is frequently called rather than the you are optimizing the action that is heavyweight but not called frequently so i think it is not making any sense to basically optimize that so optimize only those action that is frequently calling and that is causing a lot of workload unit and that you can simply say see in your uh, graph workload unit graph so if you go to the setting okay so if you go to the logs and go to the app matrix then you can see there's a graph two graph is there that one is the how many workload unit daily consume and where exactly all this consumed so that you can figure out which workflow is causing more workload unit 
second thing is use the terminate the workflow action so that when whenever you use the terminate the workflow action it will not go beyond that point so it will save a lot of workload unit so the workload unit that is consume by the action make changes to the lift or delete things of the lift far less than the when you call the schedule data on that lift of things or when you do the recursive uh, backend workflow thing so this is one tips there is one more element action in the bubble that is called do when condition is true always use a condition on that otherwise if you use that action do when search true along with the do search for it will cause you a lot of workload unit and it keeps calling it so just better to put a condition when you want to call it okay now comes to the backend workflow backend workflow consists of four kind of action or element action one is api workflow second is database trigger third is custom event and fourth is scheduled uh, things now here we are going to talk about the two basically api workflow and and database trigger because others are pretty much same as the actions we are discuss in the step 3 so the first is api workflow so api workflow can be call internally or externally first we let's talk about the externally always put a security over there who can call it if you want to keep it that public use the signing secret method to verify it is a valid call or not otherwise anyone can take your url and keeps calling it and your workload unit if all the action related to that workflow is calling it your workload unit will be out of the park and will get a lot of workload unit unnecessary second is internal when you call the internal do figure out the scenario how you want to call it do you want to call it parallel or you want to call it in a sequential way when you do the schedule lift of the things it is doing a parallel so whatever the action you have written inside that that action for 100 times all 100 times run immediately so does not matter you want it for the 20 or something like that it will definitely call for the all 100 so that will cause lot of workload unit second option is you have is recursively so run it for the first time then check okay do you want to run it next time yes or no if you want yes then schedule it again so recursive event basically so do take into consider what you want to do actually what is your use case with it okay next thing is database trigger triggers whenever any change in data either is a create update or delete so better to put a condition there always when you want to run it so that will basically save you lot of workload unit otherwise you want to run only in case of the creation but you end up in case of update and deletion also so that will consume a lot of workload unit and the database trigger is the one of the easy way to spike your database workload unit yeah that's it for the video in a summary don't panic about or don't don't be super panic about the reducing the workload unit take your time specifically thing every action should it consume or not see what's your workload is consume in a 7 days or 14 days and which action is causing a more and then work on that either you can change ux of your app so that your workload will unit will be less or you can use the some other ways or you can use third party services that will cause you the less uh, workload unit that is the way of going forward with that to stop and also don't compromise your security to save your workload unit any at any cost So that's it for this video. If you like it or if you have any question, if you want to me to create any follow up video on this workload unit thing, do let me know. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Take care.